Okay, we're doing the, the fun stuff today on this one. Scraping all this uh, stuff off. Notice this car got hit before in the back. All this has been replaced. All these uh, motor pieces there, or engine 10, whatever there, engine compartment. Uh, I just wanted to point something out to you Volkswagen guys. You know, if you do plan on putting a wiring harness in, you uh, leave this part in and uh, what you can do is you can attach the new wiring harness to the front there or the back, whatever you prefer. It's usually easier from the front and you can pull it through with this old one. Uh, you know, you don't want to pull that out until you uh, use it to pull the other one through. So it's a little tip there. You know, you can uh, tuck that out of the way and paint around it and at the end, you know, cheech that out of there and tie the new one to it and pull it through. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys were these uh, engine compartment seals before I cut this out. I got a lot of guys that talk about heat, you know, their Volkswagen's running hot and uh, when they get on the interstate and stuff like that. Uh, this car had air condition and uh, it doesn't run hot, you know, it has a 1776 with dual carbs and AC. Uh, it's really important to seal up the engine compartment. This is the front seal that seals to the pan. Uh, some people call that the rear flywheel, the flywheel side of the motor. This seal uh, seals against your pan there, and uh, it makes this uh, engine compartment tight. And what happens with the doghouse cooler is it blows the hot air out, you know, the back of the fan housing through a little chute through here. Uh, when you don't have these seals in place, especially this seal and you get holes this one needs to be replaced anyway we're getting ready to cut it out but the pan sits against the seal and creates a, a seal it keeps the exhaust from coming back up into the engine compartment and uh, I'll show you on this car the pan we're not using the AC uh, holes you can see this car has a new seal I put new seals in all my stuff and you can see how tight it is uh, it's airtight, you know, and that's how it needs to be. Uh, the tighter you can make this back here, the cooler your car will run for sure. Uh, this can drop the, the cylinder head temperature by as much as 100 degrees uh, because when you have this exposed or have these holes open here, uh, this air, hot air comes in here and gets sucked into the fan, which uh, blows hot air over the oil. So you're heating your uh, oil up, which makes it lose the ability to pull heat off the engine and uh, you're also you know cooling the cylinder tens or the heads with hot air from the exhaust so you want to keep that uh definitely sealed as possible that's uh this thing here fits really tight once it's in there and you get a pass the rubber you know there's no uh no gaps i gotta make a little piece of aluminum for by the dipstick and that little hole right there will cause it to run you know hotter uh that little hole won't cause it to overheat of course but you want to make sure that those it seals up as possible so you're pulling you know fresh air into the fan not hot air from under the car uh, this car this car does have the gauges in it you know and these are this is probably the most important gauge to have on a Volkswagen I think and that's the cylinder head temperature you know you can pretty much monitor what's going on with that Aluminum melts at 600 degrees, you know. Uh, Volkswagen's on the interstate. I've heard as high as 350, you know. That's a little hot on the cylinder head. But uh, I've seen them up around 400, 500, you know, when they have the holes and stuff in the tens. So uh, that's an important gauge to get. And if you can't afford the cylinder head uh, temp gauge, Gene Berg, if you go to his website, they sell a... Uh, they sell a gauge that actually goes right in the dipstick hole there and uh, what it does is it has a spring in it and the spring heats up and when it gets to a certain you know temperature it comes and makes contact with a contact point on the dipstick and it turns the oil light on in the dash and lets you know that your oil temperature has reached 220 degrees and uh, it gives you the opportunity to either you know pull over and have a coke or slow down and let the uh, oil cool off whatever you have but uh i think they're about 23 dollars or not much money and it's a real good investment you know it's called the temperature dipstick look into that if you got a volkswagen then again it wires into the oil light 
and you don't have to disconnect the oil light it just set, comes with a T and uh, when the oil temperature gets hot you know your oil light will illuminate and uh, you know you can back off and uh, let your oil cool down so I like to have either one or the other you know the cylinder head temperature or the oil temperature uh, both are nice I like to put an oil temperature gauge in that car maybe you know because it's cool to watch the cylinder head temperature and the oil temperature all right so I'm gonna get back to scraping on this and uh, try to get this all cleaned up so so yep that's where we're at on this bad boy and uh, gotta clean the garage and I'm gonna let Hans come out here and do that as soon as he wakes up so the sun's not quite high enough for him yet but uh yeah all right guys a uh, little tip on the Volkswagen stuff you can use it not use it whatever but uh heat's the killer you know it's air cold hot air is no good cold air is good